Hello and welcome everyone, Lahart here, and today I'm taking a look at MSI's latest gaming PC, the Infinite A8RC. But what's a great PC without an equally great monitor? So MSI have sent over their Optics Mag 27.1CR curved gaming monitor for me to take a look at in this video as well. Here in the UK you'll find MSI's complete Infinite A series exclusively at Curry's PC World. You can find a link in the description and it's worth checking out their offers that they have running currently at the moment too uh, that are going on until the end of September where if you buy a select MSI PC or MSI monitor you'll get an MSI Deluxe gaming pack while stocks last. There's also another promotion running where you can get £88 cash back with the purchase of an eligible MSI desktop, graphics card or mag monitor so plenty of deals to check on out they're all in the description down below anyway without further ado let's check out the specs of the MSI Infinite A 8RC that I've got here today the Infinite A 8RC features an Intel i7-8700 processor with a base clock of 3.2GHz and a max turbo clock of 4.6GHz. While this isn't a K version and therefore not unlocked for overclocking, the 8700 will be more than capable for running the latest games for years to come, as well as also handling things like streaming to Twitch or YouTube and other content creation applications and programs like Adobe Premiere just fine. There is only 8GB of DDR4 RAM in this PC in a single channel configuration. Personally I prefer to see this PC with 16GB of RAM in a dual channel configuration, but again 8GB will be fine for gaming for now, plus you can easily add in another stick of RAM in the future should you wish to. The motherboard is an MSI B360 Bazooka which is a standard micro ATX motherboard which is great compared to say MSI's Aegis PC lineup which feature custom motherboards meaning that upgrading in those systems is very limited. Thankfully that's not the case here with the Infinite A8RC, you should be able to fit any other micro ATX motherboard in the case just fine which means you can upgrade the system completely down the line if you want to. For the GPU we have a GTX 1066GB graphics card which from what I can see is MSI's GTX 1066GT OCV2 card which features a slight overclock to the core clock um, with its base speed sitting at 1544MHz and a boost clock of 1759MHz so again a slight overclock from a stock 1060. It features a dual fan design and is vertically mounted in the case which alongside the Infinite A's case cooling design works very well to keep the GPU cool but I'll talk more about temperatures in a bit. Storage wise you get a 128 gig SSD as the primary boot drive with Windows 10 installed to it plus a 2 terabyte hard drive for bulk storage which will likely be home for most of your games. However that's not all. The Infinite A8RC also features a 16 gig Intel Optane SSD plugged into the single M.2 slot on the motherboard. This is paired up with the 2TB hard drive and is used to accelerate the hard drive by caching frequently used files that benefit from faster access times that the Optane SSD can provide. In a gaming scenario this means that you should experience faster load times for regularly played games even though they're installed on a relatively slow 2TB hard drive uh, as it's paired up to the Optane SSD. This is a great way to utilize cheaper but larger storage hard drives compared to more expensive and smaller capacity SSDs. Powering the whole system is a 550 watt PSU with 80 plus bronze certification which runs the system nicely. Finally, let's take a look at the case. While it certainly won't appeal to everyone, I love MSI's Infinite A's case. There's something about the angular design combined with the RGB circuit board LEDs down the left side of the front panel that just hits the spot for me. I also really like the fact that MSI include both a tempered glass side panel as well as a regular solid side panel uh, with vents for the GPU allowing you to decide which one you want to use. If you're planning to place the Infinite A up on your desk, then definitely pop on the tempered glass side panel. It was born to be displayed. However, if you don't have the desk space, then throw on the regular solid side panel and place the PC under your desk or wherever you've got the space for it for a more discreet look. There's a whole host of RGB LEDs equipped throughout the case and on the custom MSI Air CPU cooler, uh, two which can all be configured or turned off completely via the MSI Mystic Lite software. Also there's a solid carrying handle at the back of the case which MSI have included to allow you to easily pick up and move the Infinite A8RC uh, around with. 
Whether you're going to a LAN, a friend's house, or transporting your PC to university for a long semester of serious gaming, uh, I mean studying, then the handle certainly makes it easier to pick up the 13kg Infinite A, plus as already mentioned the graphics card is vertically mounted, so you won't risk damaging the GPU like you potentially would if it was horizontally mounted if you're keen to make use of that handle and transport the Infinite A around a bit. Returning to the topic of temperatures, something that MSI started with their Aegis PC lineup and has made its way over to the Infinite A series of PCs too, is the multi-chamber cooling design of their cases. For the Infinite A, it features a three-chamber cooling system separating the CPU and motherboard in one section, the GPU in another section, and the PSU in a final section. MSI claims that this design is more heat emission efficient and helps to provide a more stable and durable system overall while remaining quieter than other systems. Overall, in my testing, I must admit that I found the PC very quiet, so I'd certainly say that offering separate cooling chambers for the main heat emitting components is a good move, as it seems like the fans throughout the whole system don't have to work anywhere near as hard as comparable systems that don't have separate component chambers. The CPU idled at around 32 degrees and topped out in the gaming benchmarks at 78 degrees Celsius, uh, which for an air cooler on an i7 I think is fairly reasonable. While I've not read anywhere regarding the Infinite A's water cooling support, I reckon you can definitely fit a single 120mm uh, radiator all-in-one CPU cooler onto the rear exhaust fan if you wanted to lower CPU temperatures uh, even further. You might even be able to fit a slimline 240mm radiator uh, CPU cooler onto the top of the case, but that's not something I was able to test this time. However, the custom MSI Air CPU cooler that comes with the PC is more than enough for keeping the i7-8700 at safe temperatures, at least in all my testing and gaming. As for GPU temperatures, the MSI GTX 1060 idled at 28 degrees and topped out at 67 degrees in my benchmarks. So solid GPU temperatures for the Infinite A there. Before we take a look at the gaming benchmarks for the Infinite A8RC, let's briefly jump through the front I.O. and rear I.O. connectivity options for the PC. On the front panel, you have a headphone and microphone jack, one USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-C port, one USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-A port, and one USB 2.0 with Supercharger 2 port. Above these ports, you have a slimline DVD disk drive which pops out of the angular front panel design. Onto the rear ports, and you have two PS2 ports, one HDMI port, one Ethernet port, three USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type A ports, one of which is a VR ready port featuring a low latency chip to offer the best VR experience. There's two USB 2.0 ports and one USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-C port. Uh, finally, there's also three audio ports as well. And on this Infinite A PC configuration, the 8RC, the GTX 1060 featured a single display port, HDMI port, and DVI-D port. Now onto the benchmarks. I'm running these all at 1920 by 1080 resolution on the MSI Optics Mag 27.1CR monitor with an aim to push the graphics settings as high as possible while maintaining 60 FPS plus where possible. I'll be benchmarking Total War Warhammer 2, Total War Saga Thrones of Britannia, Assassin's Creed Origins and the newly released Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So here we go. The walls are breached!
Estaré aquí toda la noche. ¡Ey! ¡Cuidado, niños! So as you can see from those benchmarks, I was able to run all of those games at a mix of high or ultra settings in order to achieve the goal of 60 FPS plus at 1080p. Obviously, you can of course tweak in-game graphic settings lower to achieve higher FPS results if that's your desired goal, but overall the GTX 1060 and Infinite A8 RC PC as a whole is solid for 1080p gaming and will definitely stretch to 1440p, just don't expect ultra graphic settings at 60 FPS plus in more recent titles at that resolution. I'll have the Infinite A 8RC sitting around my office a little bit longer, so if there's any other games you'd like me to benchmark, then let me know down in the comment section and I'll work on a follow-up benchmark video as well. Finally, let's talk price. Now, as a pre-built gaming system, the Infinite A 8RC is going to cost more than a custom-built PC from the same components. This particular Infinite A 8RC retails on Curry's PC World website here in the UK for £1,399, although it's worth mentioning that the model shown on the Curry's PC World site comes with a 1TB hard drive and not a 2TB hard drive like the one that I have in this review system uh, for this video. But it's still comes with that 16 gig Optane drive and 128 gig SSD too. A quick look over PC Part Picker shows that the markup on the Infinite A8RC is around 200 to 250 pounds compared to if you built a similar spec PC on your own. However, the Infinite A range of PCs from MSI isn't really, in my opinion, aimed at existing PC enthusiasts that enjoy building their own gaming systems. The Infinite A range of PCs, to me, looks like it's aimed solidly at the retail market for first-time PC gamers or for those that just want a plug-and-play PC gaming experience. Plus, each PC has already been tested to check that it works right out of the box for the first time, and if there's any issues, there's a two-year manufacturer's guarantee on the whole system, so if a fault develops, you can take it back rather easily with that handle, of course, uh, to the store and you'll be covered. With its tempered glass side panel option, I can certainly see MSI's Infinite A 8RC shining above the competition when it comes to retail gaming PCs, which are often very CPU heavy as well, featuring hefty i7 processors, but then being paired with very low end graphics cards. Thankfully, that's just not the case here with what MSI are offering with the Infinite A lineup. What MSI present with their Infinite A series of PCs is a well-balanced PC gaming platform that for those that just want to pick up a working PC from the store will love. However, I feel that the Infinite A PCs also offer a decent PC gamer ecosystem above that of a standard pre-built system. As I've highlighted in this video, MSI have built the Infinite A with upgradability in mind, allowing you, if you wanted to, to completely strip out the internal components at a later date and upgrade every part of the PC. So even if you're a first-time gaming PC buyer that isn't interested or isn't confident building their own gaming PC to start with, it's certainly something that you can do at a later date with the Infinite A series if you change your mind. Starting at £699 and going up to £1699 at the time of this video, Curry's PC World have a good range of MSI's Infinite A PCs available, so if you've liked what you've seen so far in this video then feel free to check out the links in the description down below. I would personally love for MSI to sell a bare bones version of the Infinite A with perhaps just the case available too. Uh, it would be a lot of fun to build in, as I mentioned earlier, I really do love this case design. Anyway, before I wrap up this video, as I said at the start, what's a great PC without an equally great monitor? So let's briefly take a look at the MSI Optics Mag 271CR curved gaming monitor, which I've been using alongside the MSI Infinite A8RC gaming PC in all my testing. 
As you can see, the MAG 271CR is a 27 inch curved gaming monitor featuring a viewing angle of 178 degrees, a resolution of 1920 by 1080, and a refresh rate of up to 144 hertz. It's part of MSI's latest gaming monitor refresh, replacing some similar existing models. Uh, there's no price yet, but the previous model sold for £289, or around $300-ish. Uh, so I'd expect this latest model to be around the similar sort of price point too. Now I really like curved gaming monitors, and at 27 inches I think the 1800R curve on this monitor works really well, adding extra immersion when I'm gaming, uh, plus the very thin bezels around the top and sides make for a great viewing experience overall. For a 27 inch monitor I would like to see a resolution up to uh, 1440p being supported to be honest and I believe uh, MSI's previous monitor lineup featured a 1440p version too so I'll definitely keep my eyes out for that one as well but with a refresh rate of up to 144 hertz it does mean that at 1080p you have a better chance of utilizing that higher refresh rate in more games compared to 1440p plus of course it means it keeps the price down too. Connectivity wise you've got two HDMI ports and one display port plus there's a supply USB cable to plug into your PC from the monitor to add an extra two USB 2.0 ports uh, out from the monitor itself. Worth noting there's no internal speaker on the monitor although there is a headphone out port so you'll need speakers from your PC or plugged into that headphone out port or a headset for an audio solution with this monitor. Probably not an issue for most PC gamers, but if you wanted to, say, plug in a console or another HDMI system into the monitor, then you'd need to think about external audio for your setup. Feature-wise, the monitor has adaptive FreeSync support, so if you have an AMD graphics card, then you'll be able to utilize this. As the Infinite A8RC has an NVIDIA GPU, uh, this wasn't something that I could use, however. But it does mean that the cost of the monitor is much lower than if it featured G-Sync technology. Personally, if MSI wanted to bring out a G-Sync version too, though, I certainly would wouldn't complain. There's also HDCR support on this monitor, which is high dynamic contrast range, which helps to maintain image quality in bright conditions by adjusting the contrast of images on the screen to ambient light levels. As it's 2018, there is obviously some RGB on this monitor as well, located on the rear of the monitor, which can sync up to the rest of your MSI system via the MSI Mystic Light software sync, or if you don't like it, you can turn it off completely. I'm actually rather impressed with the on-screen display functionality for this monitor, which is often a pain to navigate on some monitors, but MSI have a single joystick control solution on the rear of the panel at the bottom right, which has been very easy to use, leaving only a single button on the bottom and front of the display for the power on and off. The stand that comes with the monitor is also rather solid, the base itself is metal while the rest of the stand is made out of plastic, however it all seemed nice and solid and secure during my use with it. If you don't want to use the included stand then you can utilise the 100 by 100 millimeter uh, VESA mount on the back of the monitor instead. That's pretty much all I've got to say for the Optics Mag 271CR from MSI right now. Uh, if you have any questions about the monitor, then feel free to pop them down in the comment section below. Would you pick up one of these monitors? To be honest, I really don't want to send it back to MSI, so uh, shh, don't tell them. I, I would love to see a 1440p version for sure, uh, as that's what I'm currently running my existing monitor setup. And if MSI also brought out a G-Sync version too, then it would just be an instant buy for me. I really do love this curved panel. Uh, but if you want a solid 27 inch 1080p 144hz curved gaming monitor then do keep your eyes peeled for when this monitor releases and goes on sale very soon. So a big thanks to MSI for sending over the Infinite A8RC and Optics Mag 271CR monitor for me to have a play with. Uh, I'll be following this video up in a week or two's time when I take a look at some gaming peripherals from MSI as well. So be sure to subscribe for more MSI tech videos, plus you know all that Total War goodness that I regularly upload too. Anyway, until the next one, I hope you've enjoyed. Don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter, take pride on the Legion. Check out my affiliates and sponsors, Games Planet, Overclockers UK, QT and MSI. Till the next one, ciao for now.